All right, whatever. welcome back to Autodesk Maya in 2017. In this tutorial, we're going to discover uh, the MASH uh, distribution node. So I have Maya open here, and I'm going to create a cube here. And I'm going to right-click, go to face mode, because I want something kind of interesting to look at. So I'm going to select these faces here and do a simple extrude. And then I'm going to make sure uh, faces are unchecked by clicking this little button here. Click that to make it off. Click on the cube, scale in a little bit and then hit G to repeat and just grab blue arrow and scale in. Just so I have like this kind of like a crate kind of object. Uh, just looks a little more interesting to look at. I am going to turn off the grid just so it's easier to see. And I'm going to add the uh, wireframe uh, on solid, shaded solid, so you can see as I deselect this, uh, what it looks like. I have the outliner open here. I have my attribute and my channel box open and available. And so what I'm going to do is switch from modeling to FX menu here in the drop down and then choose the mash icon, the new icon here, and go down to create mash network. Now watch what happens is PQ1 currently, as soon as I click this, it'll add the network, which is the mash1 option here, and here's the mash1 repro mesh. So what you do is you click on the mash1 object here and uh, you'll have all your nodes in here and it comes with a repro node and a distribution node and the repro is currently set to that pq1 if i named it something interesting um, in fact if i undo a couple times let's undo uh, one more time there we are let's go ahead and just rename this call it um, cool crate <laughs> just so it's a little easier to see you know what we're talking about here and then go to the mash and create mash network and now you can see here uh, now we got the cool crate and the mat one repo, repo node if I open up that and in here you'll see cool crate is the object that is being distributed so what mash is doing here by default is distributing this on a line here if we go to the, the node uh, mash one distribute node it's set to linear by default it has a little checkbox here to enable or disable and here's the number of points I can increase this however many I want uh, based upon your graphics card. Um, mine really starts to slow down when I get into the thousands for this current machine. I've got to upgrade, but I'll keep around six right now. Um, and then uh, down in the linear section, if this isn't open, you can click it open. And here's all your options. They're basically your standard transform. So right now, distant X is uh, applied to value 20. Then we have Y, Z. So these are standard transforms. Then we have standard scale transforms, right? So all of these uh, parameters here, if you right click, you can see you can set a key. So everything in here you could animate, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can imagine you can do all kinds of interesting things with rotate, scale, and uh, transform. But linear is just one of these. So let's collapse this and check out something else. So if I go up here to the next one, radial, let's zoom out a little bit here. You can see radial here, and if I open up the radial options, We've got the radius, which is basically how far it shoots out now. As you add more of these, you'll see uh, they get closer, tighter together. And um, then you have your angle, which is basically you could animate them sort of uh, going around the circle. You can also animate sort of a, um, a hydro uh, hydrophilix here. Look, we could see here the Z offset, which is pretty cool. And um, the radius axis you could change to different ones. So if you wanted to go in a different direction, you can do that in these drop down menus, which is pretty cool. So uh, lots of fun options there. Let's collapse radial and go to the next one, which is spherical. So spherical, uh, if we open it up, it doesn't look like much here. And if we change these values here, you're like, what's happening here? If we change this, well, what's happening is it's going kind of flat to round, but it doesn't really show the roundness because we don't really have enough points if we add like a hundred here or maybe add like 300 just dial in 300 here now we're starting to see uh, sort of the beginnings of a sphere here and so now if I drop this value here you can see it goes from this flat sort of um, uh, sort of ellipse to full-on sphere which is pretty cool and you can do that sort of both directions you have this point that kind of goes to a circle and then of course the radius the expansion there these are uh, the speed and time has to do if you want to animate it, but they're all pretty cool attributes there that you can play around with. Let's collapse that and look at the next one. So the next one we're going to look at, we're going to skip mesh for a second here, is go to grid. And grid basically, um, if we go to the grid section, 
let's see, where is it here? Here it is, grid. You have um, the distance, which is how far out you want these to go in the X, Y, and Z. And you need uh, uh, numbers to see this, really. But here are the numbers. So if I'm going to add more on the X or more on the Y, now as I increase or decrease the distance, you can kind of see it now, um, or more on the Z. And you can get some really cool sort of grid quality uh, distribution, which is really awesome. So now let's uh, the main next one I'm going to really check out. There's a couple other ones that you can play around on your own. The initial states, paint effects, um, this in position. But I'm going to go to the mesh, which is the next real popular one. And you have to connect a mesh for this to work. I'm going to lower the number here a little bit to I don't know something like 74 to start with. But we need to create a mesh, so I'm going to create a uh, sphere, and I'm just going to scale it up by hitting the R key and scale it up. Then I'm going to create a, uh, a plane and scale that one up. And I'm going to add some subdivisions. So in the channel box here, I'm going to go to the polyplane, highlight width and height, and just add some subdivisions here, maybe like 26 or so. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is hide the plane. So I'm just going to click on it and hit Control H. So I have the sphere here. So uh, what I'm going to do is click on the Mesh One node here. Again, go back to Attribute Editor. And in here, under Mesh, you have to go down to the Mesh section. So let's collapse grid, open the Mesh section. And what we need to do is connect an input mesh. This is important. So it's based upon whatever kind of input you want. So I'll show a plane first, and then I'll do a sphere. So the plane one here, um, or actually I'll do this. Yeah, I'll do the plane first. Let's, let's hide uh, the sphere here. So let's go back here, and let's input that plane. So I'm going to drag the plane here. And a middle click mouse over it and then just drag it over to the not connected area and drop it in. Now because I hit it, it's actually hiding hiding the whole plane. I can hit shift H and it will come back. Um, but you can hide the geometry and just leave the, uh, the distribution, which is pretty cool. Right now you can see it kind of pierces the, the, the plane here. So I can go through here and um, go back to mash one distribute. And in here, I can change the offsets. Right now, it's under scatter and has a, a push value here. I found out that um, 0 0.003, I believe, gets it pretty close to the end. Must be an extra zero there. Let's try 0 0.003. Uh, no. So sometimes they change based upon whatever it is that you have there. Nope. So anyways, you got to play around these values to see how they adjust. Um, 0 0.03 is a little strong, so you 0 0.01. Ah, there you go. 0 0.01 is pretty good. Still pierces geometry. Uh, last time I tested this, I just had a standard cube. So uh, these are a little bit modified. Again, I did a little extrusion here. But anyways, um, with scatter selected, you can um, basically distribute it. Again, push along the normal. And then... Um, under yeah that's pretty much it for this there's other options here if you if you drop down the menu here oh uh, you can change the numbers based upon um, eh, I moved it up and down so you can change this based upon this value here so if I type in say 200 oops I put 20 uh, 200 here you'll see you'll distribute more of these sort of randomly uh, for scatter but there's vertex which basically aligns the vertices and so if you don't have enough, you would have to increase this value. So if I type in, say, 2,000, you'll see I've covered the whole plane. Um, you can also uh, flood mesh is another option here by checking that little box there. Um, let's reduce this value to maybe like, uh, I don't know, uh, 500 maybe. Like there we go. And um, under vertex, there's also random vertex. There is a face center, which will allow it to go in the faces. And then um, what I wanted to show you with that is if you flood mesh, it floods it, right? So it flood, covers it, even though my number up there, it sort of overrides it and gives it more. Um, then you have the voxel amount. Now, the voxel is not going to show up on this plane. We'll need to change out the, the form here. So I'll do that real quick uh, with the sphere. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to middle click and drag this sphere into here. You can swap objects pretty quick and easy. And then I'll, I'll hide um, this uh, plane here. 
and so the sphere is currently being hidden which is fine I don't mind uh, not seeing it right now I kind of like seeing the cubes here but if we click on mash one node here there's scatter and if we go to uh, voxel here uh, there's random face center and face center you can see how interesting that looks on the sphere and then if we go to voxel here uh, it's based upon these points and if we go to the voxel settings here you can see here we have the total size, the border, and so forth. And you basically adjust these and adjust how it looks. So the voxel size here, if you drag this slider, you'll get some pretty cool, interesting uh, parameters. And then there's a pattern offset in the X, Y, and Z, which is not showing a lot of variation here. My graphics card is not uh, the best. It would definitely show off a little bit better with a better graphics card. But um, those are the main settings. The voxel one is pretty cool. Um, you could do random edge, uh, so there's some other options here. You can see what random edge looks like here. Um, you could do edge, you can see it just follows the edges of the object, so there's a couple other ones to play around with here, but they're, they're all pretty fun. Scatter, of course, and it looks pretty cool in a, a sphere for the mesh. You can basically apply this to any kind of mesh you want in here at the bottom uh, and drag it in. So that's a basic overview of the mesh distribution mode. Again, um, you can see my mash one object here and the distribute and um, all the different options here. They're lots of fun. Uh, we didn't go over the painting effects, but you can basically paint in on the mesh, which is kind of fun and add uh, however many you want there. But until next time, see you soon in uh, Autodesk Maya 2017. Cheers.